Good morning, Moparians. It's Mopar Mike from Nielsen Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. We got our new spring getup, as you can see. I uh, just wanted to uh, wish everybody a happy uh, Mopar Monday. And I uh, wanted to give you guys uh, some information here. Uh, I just put out a, uh, a couple different uh couple different new blogs and one of them that I recently did uh, I thought a lot of people would find useful um, and uh, the blog basically has to do with uh, uh, putting money down on a vehicle um, a lot of people uh, when they're looking to buy a new car you, you get different people you got some people that have absolutely no problem putting down five ten thousand dollars without blinking and then you got you know other individuals uh, that don't want to put anything down um, and literally when I say, you know, anything like they sometimes even have a problem putting down their first month's payment on a lease, uh, they, they want to negotiate that. And then unfortunately you can't do that. You know, the, uh, the, the bank is looking for their first, uh, month's payment. Uh, nevertheless, I uh, wanted to, uh, uh, touch upon this in a video real quick. I, I do have, uh, the article it's on my website. So if you want to check out the blog article, it's www.moparmikenj.com. And uh, just uh, simply click on the uh, blog link and you'll uh, have access to all my blogs. Uh, uh, being that this is my latest one, it'll be on top. Uh, but wanted to uh, just basically touch base a little bit with it. Um, so I can basically just, you know, uh, talk to you guys a little bit. If you, you guys have questions, we can kind of, you know, bounce it back and forth a little bit as I do this video. Um, but basically, uh, I wanted to uh, talk about What's the right amount of money to put down? Um, a lot of people have this question, uh, particularly newer buyers, uh, you know, individuals that are buying their first or second car, uh, haven't done this too often. Um, they have questions about, well, you know, how much should I put down? A lot of times, you know, these individuals will bring, you know, someone older and wiser with them, you know, to help them make their uh, purchase decision, which is a, you know, it's a very smart thing to do. You know, obviously you want to make sure that you're making a uh, responsible decision in uh, uh, making your next vehicle purchase. Uh, but, you know, uh, coming back to that question of what is the right amount of money to put down? So I uh, wanted to uh, first touch on the fact that, you know, there is no right or wrong answer to this. Um, it, everybody's situations are different. So for some individuals, putting $10,000 down might be the right decision. Other people putting zero money down might be the right decision. Put something in between that may be the right decision. So uh, basically, uh, what this really comes down to is each individual situation, um, how they're buying their car, um, and what they're looking to accomplish while buying their car. Um, so uh, in our area here, uh, over 90% of our customers are leasing customers. Um, so a lot of individuals that are leasing a car, they really don't wanna put too much money down uh, or they wanna put no money down because quite frankly, the bank owns the car, not them. And that makes sense. Um, but uh, one thing that I always like to recommend uh, with leasing customers is to at least put down uh, your taxes, uh, your fees, a motor vehicle, all the things that you are gonna have to pay uh, for your leased vehicle, no matter what, um, and not rolling that into your payment because all you're doing is allowing the bank that you're leasing your vehicle from to make money on your taxes and fees that you have to pay for anyway. Um, and, and to me, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. You might as well save that money um, uh, by putting that money down uh, up front. Now, if you have really great credit and you know you, you don't mind having a slightly higher payment, uh, it may make sense to you to, to not do that. Um, so so uh, for some individuals that have really good credit and uh, hey, how's it going, Jose? Um, I'm uh, doing a, uh, a video here on uh, what's the right amount of money to put down uh, when you're buying a vehicle. Um, I did a blog article on this and uh, it's on my website. It's uh, www.moparmikenj.com, uh, and uh, just hit the blog article, uh, you know, the blog link uh, to uh, take a look at these articles. But I wanted to do a Facebook Live video today uh, to uh, kind of go over uh, my latest blog, which is basically, you know, what's the right amount of money to put down uh, when purchasing a car. So. Back to what I was saying here, um, when leasing a car, uh, I always recommend to my customers to at least put down your taxes, fees, and motor vehicle. Um, 
because you have to pay these fees no matter what. So to me, I, it, for me from my personal standpoint, I feel it's a little foolish to allow the bank to make money off of something that you have to pay no matter what. Um, but like I said, everybody's situations are a little different. Um, uh, if uh, they're buying a vehicle and they don't mind having a slightly higher payment and they'd rather keep you know their uh, money in their pockets, uh, it may make sense to put literally zero zero down, pay your first month's payment only, and you know basically sign and drive you know and uh, leave the dealership uh, with a slightly higher payment and, uh, and and do it that way. Um, but generally, I do recommend you know putting down your taxes, fees, motor vehicle. Most cars, you know, uh, it'll be somewhere around $2,500 to $3,000, somewhere in that range, a little more, a little less, depending on the price of the car. Um, but that's my personal recommendation for, for, for leasing. Um, if you're financing a car, um, obviously the more money that you put down, the less you're paying in interest. Um, so you, know, you have that aspect if someone's financing a vehicle, and that goes with whether it's new or used. Hey, how's it going, Clue? So, uh, you know, uh, from a financial uh, aspect of, you know, owning the car, financing the car, um, putting them, putting more money down uh, can also sometimes basically buy your rate lower too. Uh, so a lot of people think that, you know, when we're trying to get money down, we're trying to get more money out of them. Uh, uh, when uh, we're trying to negotiate, you know, monthly payment and all that, um, so people really don't realize that sometimes we literally are trying to help them uh, by getting more money down because it gives us a more negotiating power with the banks. Uh, so, you know, if you are at that, you know, 690, 700 credit score where, you know, you may be, you know, uh, you're not, you know, uh, top tier uh, in terms of where you qualify, sometimes having that additional money down can uh, sometimes allow us uh, to muscle the banks a little bit into saying, hey, listen, you know, they've got substantial amount of money down. Uh, you know, if you look at their credit history, you know, they had a couple issues over here, but, you know, they, they've uh, been doing well lately with this. And, you know, uh, being that they have the money to put down, you know, help us out here. And a lot of times the banks will do that. Um, so you have that aspect as well. Um, another situation where a lot of times it's actually required is if, uh, individual is looking to get out of a vehicle and for whatever reason they're way over mileage they were in a car accident whatever it is a lot of times you know you have situations where people are what we call in the auto industry flipped um, or, or you know, their current vehicle has negative equity now what that basically means is what the vehicle is worth is less than what is currently owed um, and even on a lease uh, you know that'll still apply um, in one of two ways, either whatever the remaining amount of payments are, plus disposition fees and all that, or what the vehicle is worth uh, in terms of buyout, if we were to buy the car from the bank versus what the car is worth market value. So looking at it from that aspect too, um, you know, even when someone's leasing a vehicle, uh, they, they may still be in a situation where to get out of that vehicle, they're flipped. Now, a lot of times in those situations, it's because someone is right about to hit their mileage or they've already been driving over their mileage. Now they're literally driving a taxi cab, you know, the, the meter's running um, and they need to get out of this thing because they are, uh, you know, th th they're basically running the meter. Now, I had a customer this weekend that, you know, is in a Ram truck. Uh, it's a 2017 and uh, the vehicle already has over 40,000 miles on it. Uh, and at this point in time, you know, calculating uh, what his average mileage is per month, which I believe was around 1600 miles a month he's driving. I showed him, I was like, you're telling me that you're paying three ninety eight a month for this, uh, you know, for this lease right now. Um, and uh, although that, you know, me helping you get out of this vehicle sounds like it's much higher, you have to realize, I think we were around, you know, mid fives, uh, you know, buy buying him out of his lease, you know, getting him out of this bad situation. He's like, well, man, you know, that's a lot more money than I'm paying now. And I showed him, I'm like, listen, if I calculate your mileage right now, what you're what you're actually driving this you know this month, you know 1,600 miles, you already went over your allotment in your lease, and I calculated his mileage penalty per month. I was like, you're no longer paying 398 a month. 
uh, with your mileage penalty right now, you are actually paying an upwards of almost $800. Now, I don't remember exactly what the calculation was when I was going into, uh, through this with him, but that's essentially what it was. Um, it, I was like, you, you no longer have that 398. You're literally doubling your payment right now to continue driving this truck. So although you only are seeing your monthly payment right now, uh, you know, for your lease of 398, that's not reality. That extra $400 is being padded in what you're going to have to pay when you turn that vehicle in. So it's either you get out now and you know you have a slightly higher payment of like $150, $200 more per month, and we get you out of that bad situation, or you know, uh, to continue to deny the situation that we're in. Now, when you uh, finally get out of it in a couple months, now it's not gonna be even more than, you know, the $150 more per month. Now it's gonna be, you know, literally $300, $400 more per month because you waited all that time and you just let the mileage penalties rack up. So, um, in these types of situations, it's it's important, you know, to, to realize, um, you know, what what your money uh, down is, is really doing for you um in his situation the more money he's able to put down is basically buying him out of that bad situation and able to get him back into another lease vehicle or into a finance vehicle and not have to carry over that negative equity because he's basically buying himself out of that um other individuals you know said that they own the car but they've had a car accident or whatnot and uh, you know that that vehicle you know with the finance you know it, it's a different scenario um and, you know so you know that negative equity there um but same thing basically what it comes down to is with the bank um they're not going to loan you a certain uh, allocated amount for what the vehicle in which you're buying is worth plus give you basically a um unsecured loan on top of it um, to a point, um, they always uh, leave a little bit of cushion because they understand sometimes people get in these situations, but when these situations become more extreme, um, they're not going to, um, you know, buy a loan if uh, it puts the bank into a very risky position to, to lose a lot of this money. So uh, sometimes, like I said, if, if people are in a position where, you know, their vehicle um, is uh, in the, you know, let's say the vehicle uh uh, payoff is $35,000, but the car's only worth $25,000, they're flipped $10,000 in the hole. Um, uh, so in those types of situations, you know, if, if they're in upwards of $10,000, the bank is not going to roll that into uh, their next lease, their next finance, whatever it is. So in these situations, it's very important for the customer to put money down. It uh, allows us to bring them basically back into a situation where uh, we can have the bank look at you know what we're trying to accomplish and get them bought on their next next loan or lease um, so all different types of situations out there um, whether someone's leasing a brand new vehicle they don't have a previous vehicle they have to worry about um, there, there's no right wrong or indifferent uh, some people it may make more sense for them to keep their money in their pocket um, and uh, put very to little, you know, or even no money down um, and have a higher monthly payment, or um, it may make more sense to put, you know, more money down and then you don't have to, you know, worry about having such a high monthly payment. Um, so uh, I do touch upon uh, this a little bit more in detail in my blog. Uh, hey, how's it going, Henry? How's it going, Clue? I don't know if I uh, shout out to you yet, um, but uh, a lot of my customers come in they have these questions, you know, they'll, like I said, they'll, they'll come with somebody that's older and wiser, you know, that they, they uh, appreciate uh, their wisdom and uh, want to make sure they're making a smart decision, but they still have these questions as to, you know, how much is the right amount of money to put down. And a lot of times, actually what I see is, you know, a lot of times the person that they bring along with them will even sometimes try to uh, uh, dissuade them from actually doing what is really kind of the right thing to do for their situation. I've had people say, you know, that they basically tell me, Hey, I, I got $3,000 to put down it. And you know, if that's going to get me to my payment, then, you know, uh, I'll, I'll do that. And then the person that they brought with them is like, no, 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 you, you shouldn't be able to put any money down, blah, 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 blah. And you know, that, that just, <laughs> it actually hurts the situation because, you know, um, 
uh, some situations, like I said, uh, me personally, I think putting down twenty five hundred to three thousand dollars, you know, for, for a lease, you know, makes sense because you, to cover your taxes, fees, your motor vehicle, you know, dis, you know, not the disposition, but your documentation fees, you know, all these things that you have to pay no matter what uh, when you lease a vehicle. It, it, it makes sense to do that because if you don't do that and you roll that uh, uh, money into your leasing payment, um, now the bank is making money on these fees that you got to pay anyway. So, you know, uh, going back and forth with this, um, there is no right, wrong, or indifferent answer as to what's the right amount of money to put down uh, when you're, you know, purchasing a car. It's really a matter of, you know, looking at your personal situation and uh you know uh reviewing that uh, what are you comfortable putting down uh putting down three thousand dollars doesn't make any sense if it's going to completely clean you out and you're not going to be able to pay you know your rent or you're not going to be able to buy your groceries or anything like that you know so it's one of those things where each individual when they come in they're looking to purchase a vehicle you know actually looking at uh what their current situation is uh, what's going to allow them to be comfortable while also trying, obviously our goal is to help you maintain a comfortable monthly payment uh, that, uh, a, you know, you feel uh, is, is reasonable um, and making sure that we're working on the correct car to get you there. So I hope this uh, w w was useful. Uh, if you guys have questions, you guys uh, have any uh, uh, responses to this, uh, critiques, whatever it may be, uh, please reach out to me. You can uh, reach me uh, on my uh, uh, Facebook page. It's uh, Mopar Mike M. If you're watching this, obviously you know that. Uh, you can uh, take a look at my uh, website. Uh, I've got a chat going there too. You can reach out to me there. Uh, it's www.moparmikenj.com. You can take a look at my blogs. You can also take a look at my vlogs, the videos, uh, to uh, coincide with my blog articles. Um, all that is right there on the website. You just click on the links and uh, it'll take you directly to there. Uh, if you guys want to reach out to me direct, the, you can. Phone number is 973-970-8156. That is my cell. So uh, you can uh, call, text, whatever you guys want to do. And uh, uh, until uh, the next one, uh, remember, it's Mopar or no car. Have a good day.